Yep, that's pretty much summarizing the new player experience. Regardless, do support creators on Patreon, like me, a link for that in the description. But now let's get into the starting elite on the right, left foot. While Odyssey is a bigger stinker than Outhouse dedicated to interns over at Frontier, I know the game itself, that is the base game, is still an overwhelming thing. So to ease up any future new players' lives, I know I could lend an advice and retcon a few mistakes or changes since my beginner's video. Now obviously the number one is not to stick your dick in a ventilator, okay? It's not fun experience. But seriously though, doing the in-game tutorial Tutorial or tutorials is a good starting point, so I'll assume that you have completed at least a basic one that you already get shoved into as soon as you start your account. After all, by finishing it you get a free skin for Sidewinder if you needed an incentive. Right after tutorial, the game already assigns you the first mission. You can cancel it, sure, but why not complete it? I mean, I always do when I speedrun myself. This will lead you to draw me system and from then on you're let go like a free-range chicken in fox-infested fields. Safe to say, prepare to get fucked. However, the tutorial doesn't teach you one very important thing. A thing that makes everyone's lives easier. As long as you have shields, you can ram anything you want without consequences. This mainly helps you land quickly. Also, it's cathartic to imagine flight control freaking out as the suicidal sidewinder uses Bob's office as a stopping barrier. Sure, shields are not infinite, but... Uh, I mean, come on! Okay, now that the most important lesson is established, remember to play at your own pace. All I aim to provide today is just an idea and suggestions for a better beginning. So, if you like to, all the more power to you! Now, before we move on, there are a few things that the tutorial neglects to mention about the HUD. First, on the bottom left corner you'll see information about the target you have selected and if it is wanted or not. This will be important a little bit later. Second, that mini circle area is a positional indicator like the big thing but only for the target you have selected. If the dot is hollow, it means it's behind you and if it's full, it's in front. Simple as that. And third, the pips. These represent energy distribution in your ship. The more power to the systems, for example, the stronger the shields. The more to engines, the better normal speed and maneuverability, as well as boost recharge. And the more to weapons, the longer you can pew pew. On keyboard, this thing is controlled by arrow keys, so play with it and see how it changes your ship's capabilities. There is more to this, but for now that's all you need to know. Basically, it's important. And the last thing, the fuel. When you plot your route in Galaxy Map, the solid yellow line means that you have the fuel to make those jumps. Stripe line means that you could make it, but you don't have enough of it. So, in case you do run out of fuel, well, you can... Or better yet, call a player made an organized group called Fuel Rats. They literally have nothing better to do but to save people that ran out, no matter where they are. I'm not kidding, so give them a call. Now, after completing that first mission, you may be inclined to just go out there and do whatever. However, there are a bunch of suggestions that are worth keeping in mind. Like, whenever you're arriving in a new starport, I highly recommend you to check out and cash in all the cash things from the cash places like the universal cartographics or combat bounds and bounties. At the start, every credit will be useful. Besides, it kinda sucks when you forgot to cash in the big paycheck that you've worked so hard on as you explode literally moments after leaving. After that, here's a list of features that, at least for the time being, you should completely ignore. They are either late game, broken, unfinished, or simply unfun and made to ruin your enjoyment. 
power play. It's a political system that sucks so many dicks that the secretary of any major crook in power would be envious of. Just basically pledge to any of them and literally ignore this whole thing for the next four weeks. Trust me. BGS. It's about the same, but with no bonuses to you as a player. It's just a bunch of weirdos sitting in a circle watching some random numbers and names go up and down. Ultico. Well, this is a broken feature that's far less profitable than wings. I mean, teams these days. Basically, don't waste your time with it. Squadrons. It's a guild system that also has no reward for players nor any use. Instead, just join a player group on Discord. It's far more interesting and less broken as well. I still to this day cannot believe how idiotic and insulting squadrons are for existing player groups in general. Fleet carriers. It costs a lot and trust me, you do not need it. It's like a British crotch spawn, a hellish creature that needs to be purged. Wait, you mean baby? Uh, yeah, yeah, that thing. Uh, all it does is just eat your money and shit out gooey mess that not even your dog will eat. These pretty ships, Empire, and Federation navies as well. Literally, it's a grind system dedicated to be nothing but grind for the grind's sake. If you really need those pretty ships, just get them later. And finally, avoid at all costs Odyssey expansion. The latest, biggest, most amazing mist expansion ever. Yes, it's such a mess, and by the time this video becomes obsolete, I doubt that it even then will be worth the money. But we'll see when that comes. Still, for the time being, stick with the base game and enjoy that. But still, if you want to support something good, <coughs> 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 Okay, now you know what to ignore, but what about those ships? The big space cardboard boxes for adult men with their midlife crises. Ah, well, here I can recommend a few ships for the future progression. After the starter Sidewinder, some people usually, like yours truly, goes with an adder. A small upgrade, but a good one. After that, Cobra 3 is a great daily runner until you can afford the next one. Aspect Explorer. This ship can be your end game ship for sure, depending on what you do. But if you have some spare cash, now how about trying an upgrade? My personal favorite, Python, which is my main ship for the daily driver. Or its literal copy counterpart, Cray 2. I'm, I'm not kidding, it's literally a copy pasted ship for it. And finally, when you have collected even more money, the big king shit of the pile itself. Anaconda. Only after reaching this ship I would recommend doing those navy ships uh, like Cutter and Corvette unlocking. And as for grinding those navy ranks, I have made a video, so do check it out. I'll just skip it here. But returning to your humble Sidewinder, for now you just want to upgrade it. Well, I highly recommend your first ever purchase to be for a better FSD drive. In fact, when you get a new ship, FSD upgrade should always be your first pick. After that, equipping fuel scoop is essential while you're learning, consider it your training wheels for now. And then, docking computer also being training wheels, or if you're like me, back when I started, You can skip it. Then every fresh ship as you purchase it comes with trash lasers. You don't need those. Sell them and increase your jump range instead. However, if you really want combat build, you will build a ship like that. Otherwise, just players or NPCs, either way, no weapon will really help you. Then also take a big spoon and scoop out all the optional compartments uh, aside from the shields, docking computer and fuel scoop. Rest, you'll outfit later. Then next quality of life improvement in my opinion would be to improve thrusters. This makes the slow ships more tolerable, but really good ones properly shine. And that's it, rest you can pick whatever you want. Oh, and as for the letters next to those modules, what do they mean? Well. E is for cheapest, D is for the lightest, C is for the compromise, B is for heaviest, and A is for best. As for the weapons, when you eventually choose to pick them, always go for gimbaled weapons. They're just the easiest to use, so never forget. Also, lasers don't have ammo for the infinite pew pews. And then finally you are in space and want to pick up those items and whatnot else that are floating around, well, you can do it manually, true, but uh, I highly recommend it to pick up a collector limpet, and of course don't forget the fucking limpets in the first place, yeah, that will help you a lot. 
Now, as you start traveling around and docking in different stations, I recommend checking out the places and looking at uh, what they offer and maybe, if you find a really good one, bookmark it and maybe make it your home base for the time being. It's a good idea to set up your sort of a home base oftentimes. In fact, I have made a video about a few suggestions for those, so feel free to check it out. But now that we are done with the general knowledge and ideas for the future, let's get into actual gameplay on how to, shall we say, Skip the motherfucking grind! As a newbie, you have a few options open for you as you start, so I'll give you the best options for each of the major gameplay types, starting with my personal favorite, but not the best one, combat! Now, you are floating in basically what constitutes as a golden dumpster. It has no combat capabilities, not even as a battering ram. But it's not the end of the world. An easy way to farm credits with space pew-pews is bounty hunting. Here you just need one laser. It doesn't matter what type of it is. As a matter of fact, any weapon will do. Take your ship to the nav beacon in a system that has police. Best of all, if you find a system that has resource extraction sites, those places are the best ones. In fact, next to Dromi system where your tutorial leaves you off, there are a few systems with ringed planets. See, resource extraction sites or res sites reside in planet asteroid rings. So go there. Now what you do is scan ships, just target them and if they show up as wanted in that bottom left corner, remember that one? You can kill them with no remorse in your heart and in turn get bounty voucher for some money. And later you can exchange that for actual money in the nearby starport for the space box. And in exchange of that get a space crack cocaine addiction, but that's kinda optional. Anyways, clearly you are not powerful or capable of actually killing anything. So what you need to do is wait until somebody most likely system cops, start killing these wanted ships and all you need to do is just wait until the moment when the suspect is almost dead. Then shoot the fucker and it, once it explodes, yes, cops killed it, but you get the bounty. No, no, it's a kind of weird system, but it works. This way you can collect quite a lot of starting cash to get Asp Explorer in a few hours. But let's say it's not your thing. Well, exploration, as a matter of fact, is a better and more consistent paying route. Road to Riches is a great method of getting starting scratch. In fact, so much that the Python might be yours within about 3 to 5 hours, depending on how you play it. As a matter of fact, I got my Asp Explorer within about 2 hours of doing the Road to Riches itself, with just that dinky little Sidewinder, from a fresh start. Here, just equip the best frameship drive you can, equip all D-rated modules on everywhere else, get a fuel scoop, load up Road to Riches tool online, and off you go. Jump in an system, open up the fucking shit scanner, uh, I mean full spectrum scanner, and if you're cheeky like me... Quickly scan those good paying planets. My old video on Road to Riches is still viable just as it was back then, so go check it out if you need some more information. There'll be a link in the description. Regardless, when you feel you've had enough, return and cash in your paycheck. I personally use this for speedrunning quite often. But let's say, none of that sounds good. Well, I would not recommend, but simple trade missions or just simple trading might work for you then. Seriously though, trading does not get good until you get to a Python or something, so I would not recommend bothering with it for now. Sure, it's a good, easy, simple mission, but for newbies it's woefully underpaying in comparison. And this is what you'll be doing for the first couple of hours of the gameplay. But let's say after those initial 5 to 10 hours of playing, you finally got a python or crate or something really nice. Well now it's then time for some real money makers, the ones that are best out there right now. With ease you'll get elite rank eventually and get access to the best starport in the game, Jameson Memorial. So what do you need to do? For combat, well, elite rank will take a long time, so don't bother with that. But money-wise, ah, well, now then we are going back to hunting pirates or doing some combat zone fighting. This time, you will need some help from slaughter missions. See, some stations offer you to kill certain a number of pirates or certain number of faction troops. And say, if you have a, a friend or two, well, you get a wing mission, share it with them or between each other eventually, 
and fall through using really powerful ships and completing those missions by killing all the pirates and things, you'll make quite the space cash. But basically, this is something you will not do for a long while in your normal, standard sort of a ships. You kinda also need engineering too, so maybe leave this for a little bit later. As for exploration, yeah, you can still do the road to riches and in about 24 hours you will get that elite rank no problem. Sure, it's decent, but how does a 6220 million an hour sound like? Well, Robigo missions are exactly that. See, what you need to do is outfit your ship for jump range, slot as many business passenger seats in your ship as possible, preferably Python, and then head out to Robigo. Again, I have outlined more information in a video that I made, so go check it out. But after the first three hours of doing some road to riches with my fresh account, I was able to get an Asp Explorer and outfit it exactly like this and headed out to Robigo. Then the real cash started flowing in. So you can easily do this after three hours. No problem. In fact, you know, I will leave a link for a stream that I did exactly doing this. So enjoy it. But as for trading, well, here we turn to mining. Yes, you actually could do mining in Adder. I've done it for actually speedruns as well. But due to price fluctuations and the recent nerfs and whatnot else in the last half year or so, it's not as good. Still, for everything and anything you need to know about mining, I direct you to my ultimate guide to mining. And from there, either you pick Paynite, Low Temp Diamonds, or right now, Platinum Hotspots and in the nearest ring and enjoy the evening of lasering penises onto space rocks for profits. So yeah, these are the three currently most paying profitable things in Elite Dangerous and will be good for anything and everything you need. So get going. Going. Get a good ship, get some space crack hookers and enjoy blazing. I mean trail. I mean your trail. Oh, and one last thing, for the next things to do after you've got your space cash. Well, unlocking Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster is probably one of the best quality of life things you can do from the personal narrative. And I made a video about that as well. And then, the engineering begins for you. Oh, may the gods have mercy on your soul. Though. Always, always, always start by increasing your ship's jump range. It improves every ship regardless of a build. All else is up to you. And that is it. A lot of information, I know. You can pause it and rewatch it, of course. But if you have any questions, come join the discords. Why not? Otherwise, if you want to help me out in turn for me helping you for helping about whatever, consider becoming a patron or a channel member here on YouTube. All that links and stuff are down below as always. Hmm, but what else is left? Um, hmm.